Hey everybody, welcome back to Hard Plan Productions. We're doing Biga pizzas again tonight with Biga dough. I tried to simplify the recipe even more. I still went a little over the normal 16 hours. I did a 20 hour cold fermentation in the fridge. And then I also took it out at room temperature for five hours after that. So I made it yesterday around one o'clock, refrigerated it all night, pulled it out this morning, let it sit at room temperature, made the final dough, boiled it up. It's ready to go. They look great. A lot of people think biga dough is, is complicated and, and they're kind of afraid to do it. It's actually, I think, easier than just a standard dough. This video hopefully will demystify the biga dough. This is a super easy recipe and it's going to be very easy to follow. I think you'll like it. Just getting the rock box heated up, ready to go. Once it gets to about 450 Celsius, about 850 degrees Fahrenheit, we're going to get the pizzas yeah. going. Everything is looking great. I'm very excited to show you how it's done. For me, Biga dough is the easiest and it's the best. It's simple, it adds a lot of flavor and depth. It makes the dough more digestible so you don't feel bloated. It's great. Hope you enjoy this video. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, tell all your friends about it too. Mixing up my biga for pizzas later this week. Okay, just checking the oven to see how ready. It's just a little bit over 450, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it down. Put it on the lower heat right now. I wanna keep it about 450. I'm gonna turn that down. Perfect right there. Let's get the pizza out. The top side down on the flour. Out of the way for a second. Okay. Let's a little flour out. Okay, I'm gonna start gently in the middle, pushing out. And this is a new dough, trying a little different recipe, and we'll see how it goes. Flip it over once, kind of help develop the cornicione. Again, same thing, middle to the edge. Last week we did conotto style with a large cornicione that puffed all up. So I don't want quite as big. The kids like it, I prefer just a normal. This is the top side again. I don't really do the pull and stretch. This is kind of the method I do. I prefer this. Just easier for me. You can do either one. The dough feels good so far. I don't want too much flour because you can get too much on the bottom and gets in there and burns and kind of makes it, the dough look all funky. And kind of just develop that cornichoni just a little bit more. Do a margarita pizza first. 
This is fresh made Marzano tomato sauce. Perfect. I like to do a little sprinkle of sea salt. I didn't put a lot of salt in it and I tasted it. So I'm just gonna put a little sprinkle of sea salt on there. Usually you can do that with the sauce. You don't really have to do that right now. I'm using a little Parmesan cheese, freshly grated. Again, that adds a little bit of salt too. I'm gonna do some, some mozzarella, some fresh mozzarella cheese. Want to look good. It's easy. And just a little basil. And a little drizzle of olive oil. and slide it on and you want to reform it kind of pull it out to the edges of the peel don't want to push down too much on the cornicione you don't want to pull the air out there we go perfect i usually try not to touch it for about 20 to 30 seconds it very closely towards the back, especially in these rock boxes. I'm gonna heat my turning peel up a little bit just to make sure it doesn't, doesn't catch. And doesn't, when sometimes it's cold, the edge will catch the dough. set up a little bit the dough is often too wet with these high hydration doughs the dough is too wet and you can tear the bottom so you want to wait as long as you can before you turn it without burning the edge of the cream chili Looks great. Let's take it over here. Well, I'm making the pizzas and now I'm getting hungry. I'm gonna try to get all three of these doughs out now at once. Those starts overproofing too. I let this one probably go a little bit too long. That's okay though. Scoop it out. Nice spot here. This is the last a little leftover mini one. Start in the middle, push it out. Yeah, I'm gonna stretch out. I'm gonna slide it over and work on this one a little bit. 
shake off all the excess dough if possible. Short in the middle. This one's got a lot of bubbles too. Flip it over once. All in all, this dough feels pretty solid. Feels like it's got a lot of stretch to it, but it's not gonna rip. Shake off the dough. Maybe Tico can eat this little mini pizza. I'm sure he'd be tickled. A little pizzetta. I can't really flip her. Cool, this one. Just let gravity do this little one. This little guy. There we go. Looks good. Then try to get. Some of the excess flour out of the way. Jamon, Serrano, and arugula with this one. Once the back starts poofing up, keep this going warm this back up You'll go 250, but for me, it's a little too big. Staying shy, this is about 12 inches, the opening. So if you do 10 to 11 inches, it gives you a little bit more room to work with. Makes it a little more manageable. Crank 
crank the heat back up. This one is done also. Drill a little olive oil on the top. Perfect. Let's set this over there. Out of spots. Slide this over. Put this on the cooling rack. Okay, one more little mini pizza to go. This is the last of the doughs of the little mini baby pizza. This little baby's gonna cook fast. Oh, it's beautiful. Spin that little thing. That's a cute little pizza. Look at that little guy. You see it? That one's gonna cook fast, but it's small. Okay, a couple more seconds, and that one's done. Uh, Done. All right, got everything put away. Pizzas are going inside. Turn the rock box off. Good night. Stays nice and red for a while. Now it's time to go drink a wine and have some pizza. <laughs>